How many drinks in the body does it take to affect driving? Actually, just one will do it. No, most people won't stagger around. Many won't do anything strange. But if they need to react quickly, it may not happen. As more drinks enter the bloodstream, strange things do begin to happen. Let's see what they are. The first thing affected is judgment, usually with about two drinks in the system. Drivers begin to make bad decisions and take chances they wouldn't ordinarily take. What makes it worse is that the same bad judgment keeps them from realizing how badly they're doing. They think that they're driving better than ever, but it's obvious they aren't. They begin to drive too fast, pull out without looking, pass when they shouldn't. And well, we get the idea. The next thing to go is the ability to process information. The brain starts to slow down. With three drinks in their system, drivers are slow to recognize what's happening. Eventually, as drivers become intoxicated, they begin to lose control of cars. Some people just don't get no respect. Some people don't deserve it. For some reason, most folks don't appreciate being spilled on or thrown up on or having their furniture wrecked. He thinks he's a riot. So why isn't anybody laughing? Because he looks ridiculous. Yes, drunk driving is dangerous and disgusting and against the law. Drunk driving can cost people a fine, their license, and even their car. The law is really tough on drunk driving. And it's very clear on the subject. People don't have to look drunk or act drunk. All they have to do is show up drunk in a breath test. A breath tester measures the amount of alcohol in the blood. If it's any more than one-tenth of a percent, it's illegal. In some states, the limit is eight one-hundredths of a percent. Any more than four drinks in the system is over the limit. But for people under age 21, the limit is zero in most states. Drivers testing positive for any amount of alcohol are subject to fine as well as license suspension. No states allow more than two one-hundredths of a percent, and that's just one drink. There are a lot of myths circulating about drinking and driving. Let's clear up a few of them. Here's one. Actually, a 12-ounce bottle or can of beer, glass of wine or a wine cooler have the same amount of alcohol as a standard one-ounce shot of liquor. Here's another. All of the alcohol in the stomach will reach the bloodstream. A full stomach only delays it a short time. Believe it or not, some people really think this is so. Breath testers measure alcohol, not smell. Breath mints don't do anything either, except maybe make the officer suspicious. And one more. The body can only get rid of one drink an hour, period. But these things can produce a wide awake, clean, or sweaty drunk. Most of the people picked up for drunk driving thought they could keep from drinking too much. But remember what alcohol does to a person's judgment? The best way to make sure of hanging on to the driver's license is to ride with someone who isn't going to drink, a designated driver, and ride in the designated driver's car. Drinkers who take the designated driver in their own car often change their minds and decide they're really okay to drive. If they do take their own cars, they need to turn the keys over to the designated driver as soon as they reach any place they're going to drink. Where a party is taking place at a friend's house, an alternative is to spend the night there. But stayovers have to be arranged in advance. Many hosts aren't prepared for last-minute guests. What about the drunk who insists on driving home? Heard the phrase, friends don't let friends drive drunk? Good idea, but it's a lot easier to say than to do. 
It starts with recognizing who are the likely candidates for driving drunk. Here are some clues. One is the walking liquor store. An near relative is the one who wants everyone to chip in for a keg. They avoid taking part in activities, except for drinking games. They tend to drive by themselves, so there will be no interference. The next step is to spot those who are on the way and to do it before they get there. Signs are getting very loud or confused, sloppy, rude, or fumbling. And certainly an important step is to spot those who are already there, like people with slurred speech, who are openly antagonistic or hostile, or who can hardly walk. After spotting candidates and detecting signs, the third step is to cut them off. The sooner the better, since they will probably get worse as the alcohol in the stomach enters the bloodstream. Keeping intoxicated persons from drinking more will save a lot of trouble. Don't give a moment's thought to later resentment. If the intoxicated person remembers anything the next day, it's more likely to cause embarrassment than ill feeling. Get others to help. Apply social pressure. Don't expect cooperation. Drunks don't give up easily, and they can be quite nasty. Get the drink out of their hands. They'll probably insist that one more won't hurt them. Don't try to reason with a drunk. And don't worry about offending them. If they remember anything the next day, they're more likely to be embarrassed than sore about it. At least the ones you care about will be. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Do whatever's necessary to keep anyone who's impaired by alcohol from driving the car. Rally the troops. Make it clear that the group is ready to restrain them. If possible, grab the keys. Arrange for someone to drive them home, preferably in their car so they won't have to come back for it the next day. They can't drive it, but they don't want to be without it. Don't expect thanks. The satisfaction comes in having kept people from hurting themselves and everyone else.